Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and in 2023, I got to go to Southeast Game Exchange. Hey guys, I, uh, I got to go to Siege, and um, I guess I'll start with the beginning of the story. On uh, earlier this year, we decided, or I decided that I wanted to go to Siege because Retro Rivals was going. Uh, Scott and Jen wanted to be able to uh, go around and meet all of the people from YouTube that they have become friends with and that they just wanted to meet. And, you know, I wanted to meet them and I wanted to meet everyone else that was part of the, I guess I would call it the Retro Rivals family or community or something like that. Um, community doesn't feel like a strong enough word. <clears throat> and so I think it's, I think it's okay to call it family, but I wanted to go, I wanted to meet Scott and Jen. I wanted to meet a uh, co-op of nerds. I wanted to meet Samantha. I wanted to meet Steve Craig. I wanted to meet Brandon. And there's so many more people that I want to meet that, that, uh, did, that was not there. I wanted to meet G to the next level. Uh, he was there. And also, uh, Gary from rock solid Produ productions. I wanted to run into retro wolf 88 again. And I got to do all of that. Now there's, again, there were some few people that I was hoping to show up and I tried to help coerce people into showing up. Uh, I, I really wish Andy was there, um, but I, I get it. Family does come first. And I wish that, you know, uh, Lightsaber Samurai was there. I wish that Chris, the old S retro gamer was there. Um, I'm, I'm, I wish that Do You Nerd was there, but you know, I, I guess they were kind of all there in spirit because let me tell you guys, I had a lot of fun and I did mainly go for the people. And I know that's kind of a cheesy thing to say, but it, it's true. However, in the beginning, I was having some financial issues and it was getting a little dicey and looking like that I probably wasn't going to be able to go. And it was something that I was, that was weighing on me because I'd given my word to Scott and Jen that I was going to be there. And, uh, oh, I got to meet Dennis as well, but you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, I think things were just financially not lining up. Uh, there was additional repairs on the house. Um, someone wrecked into my wife's car. Uh, just nothing was lining up. Every time that I got a little bit of money saved up, something happened and knocked all of my savings out. So I was trying to figure out a way in February, late February, that like around the 20th or so, how I was going to break it to Scott and Jen that that I was probably not going to be able to afford to go. And I didn't like that thought and I didn't, I didn't want to do it. So I avoided doing it. I just didn't have the ability. So on February 26th, me and my wife went out to lunch. We went out to Jim and Nick's, which is a really good barbecue restaurant. If you're in, in an area and you've never tried Jim and Nick's before, definitely try them. And I just was a little bit depressed because it had been kind of this cloud hanging over me of disappointing Scott and Jen. And I just didn't want to do that. And I was trying to find a way that I could some way just even go and not buy anything and like barely have enough money for food and stuff. Well, I'm kind of a hard person to shop for. And you'll understand why I said that in a moment. My wife looked over at me and I'm, I'm a heart on my sleeve kind of guy. So I kind of wear my feelings a little bit, um, unless I'm in a professional setting and then I can just set those aside. 
So it's my wife. She knows me. We've been married for a few years. And she just looked over at me and, and asked what was wrong. And I told her because, you know, if I lie to her, she's going to find out anyways. Um, but I told her that I probably wasn't going to be able to go to Siege and that I was having a hard time coming up with the words to tell Scott and Jen um, that I was going to have to break my word to them. And my wife looked at me funny and she thought about it for a moment. And she knew I had been struggling uh, financially to keep us afloat and keep everything going and stuff. So while we're eating lunch, she just looks at me and goes, I know that how much you've been looking forward to meeting everyone that you know from YouTube in person and especially hanging out with Scott and Jen. And I don't want that taken from you. Mm. Sorry, a little choke up about that. So on February 26th at lunch, my wife said that I was going to siege. And at first I was a little in disbelief. And I was just like, no, you, we can't afford for you to do that. And then my wife, as a Southern woman, looked at me and said, you don't tell me no. <laughs> and, and it was great. I, um, I started tearing up. My, my wife is very good at being able to touch my heart and bring a tear to my eye. Even now, it, this was back in February, on February 26th, and I'm still getting choked up about this and siege is over. So I got to go to siege and have probably the time of my life. I've been to other conventions. I've been to game jam South and that was fun. And it's, you know, small. And it was how I was dipping my toe back in the, into the waters of going to conventions again. Um, and that, that was back in 2022. Um, unfortunately, I did not meet, get to go to 2023, so I missed meeting Andy, um, which is another person I really wanted to meet. I just, I was floored by what my wife told me, and I immediately hit up Jen on Facebook Messenger and told her what exactly my wife did, and, and that it was a guaranteed lock that I was going to siege. And she was so excited for me. And I was so excited to be able to meet them. So let's fast forward some to the beginning of Siege. I decided to take off on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, Monday, and Tuesday from work. And so Friday comes along and lo and behold, I'm hitching a ride with Brandon from Unnecessary Unnecessary Rambling. It was it was a car trip. We were carpooling the whole way up. And I met Brandon through Scott and Jen and Retro Rivals. We had done we had both done Get to Know Gamer, and I'd never caught all of them. And I, I guess I didn't catch the one Brandon was in, and he didn't catch the one that I was in. But when we did the end of the year get to know gamer reunion i found out he was from alabama and he found out i was from alabama and we kind of just gelled uh we just like figured out that there were certain things that we both liked and and it just it went from there it and we developed a really good close friendship and that i mean that's why uh, i'm gonna always call it the retro rivals family and it's, it's not a community. We're so much more tight knit than that. Uh, but I got to go to Siege and, and Brandon, <laughs> let me get back to that. Brandon shows up to my house. We get in the rental car and we just go from the Birmingham metro area to Atlanta. And then we go from Atlanta to Greenville, South Carolina. All the meanwhile, we are chatting each other up, 
talking about video games, having a wonderful time, and just, just it, it was just a blast. Well, we met up with everybody, and Retro Wolf 88 found one of the best barbecue places. Uh, and I went, th we all went there and just met up with tons and tons of people. And I got to meet Scott and Jen at our hotel. And Jen about dropped everything that he, she was carrying and ran over and started hugging both me and Brandon. And it, and then like Scott showed up as well and he was there and, you know, they're a little bit shorter than I expected. Um, I, I know that like the camera angles make people look like giants and, or, or, or like normal size and stuff. And I'm six feet tall and I was surprised that I was a little bit taller than them. But the biggest shock was the fact that Brandon was six too. He's big. <laughs> But we got there, we got to the hotel, we dropped off our bags, we met Scott and Jen, we went off to, to dinner before going to Pinky's Arcade and had a, a wonderful dinner with all kinds of people and all jumped into cars and we all carpooled over to Pinky's Arcade and had a blast, except for the heat. Wow, it was hot in that place. They have a ton of arcade machines, and yes, I mean, it's a barcade, so there's going to be a few of them that are messed up and don't work because people get drunk and people spill drinks, hopefully not into the arcades, but it does happen. It's buttons and levers get sticky and stop working and stuff. But they had a huge row of, of like pinball games. Uh, they didn't have my favorite, which was Adam's Family, but I think that's probably one of the most expensive ones to purchase. But then they had like all, all these other arcade games, some of which I've never even heard of before. Uh, and then Lane Genie, which is a fan, showed up and played. And they, they were playing these like metal or hard rock covers of popular video game music. That was a blast. We got to have so much fun and cut loose and just be normal people. And yes, I know that there were some people there to network and stuff like that and do YouTube things. But honestly, that wasn't me. And it, most of the Retro Rivals crew, like we, we were not there to network. We were not there to do anything like that. Now, Saturday morning hit and Siege was there. And I was lucky and got a VIP pass. I paid the extra money and I went ahead and got a VIP pass. So with that, I got a swag bag. And I also got a Siege t-shirt. This is themed for Final Fantasy VII because it's the seventh time that Siege has happened. Uh, they vinyl press these live right in front of you or heat pressed them. I think, yeah, it is a vinyl, um, but it was all on one sheet so that all they had to do was line it up, press it and go. And it's good, it's comfortable. I did not get any signatures on mine um, just because, you know, I didn't think about it. And I was, I was having more fun than trying to like get signatures and stuff. So, Let's see if I can do this whole TikTok thing about, uh, you know, throwing the shirt and it magically appearing on. So let's try. First try. Um, I, I think something went wrong. All right. Let's try that again. Well, uh, okay, we've got to get it lined up right as, uh, so that it looks perfect. All right. And second try. This is, this is not right. What? <sighs> all right, all right. Third time's the charm, right? Hey, third time was the charm. Awesome. So let's get into the bag. 
first thing I got out of this was a switch controller. Now, it's by a company that I don't know, and I haven't really tested this thing, but you know, it looks all right. Oh goodness. Yeah, I mean, it looks all right. It's actually this. Uh, it does separate off and become Joy-Cons. I think I see a rumble motor in there. I'm not so sure this scans Amiibos and stuff. However, it does have a directional pad. However, no, this directional pad's actually not that bad. It has a good, good pivot point and stuff and very nice and clicky. And it comes with the rails. It can charge normally, and it also has two USB-Cs right there. It does come with a cable. The next thing that I got <clears throat> was this guy. It's a wired controller for the Switch and the PC. And you can actually change out these little plastic pieces around to get other different effects. So let's find that controller. Now, this one doesn't feel ergonomic. It doesn't, it's not as comfortable as the other. Uh, I don't like that there's literally no pivot point in the, in the middle of here. Um, that's just not a great design because it means that I can possibly hit all four buttons at the same time. I haven't tested this one out. These white areas, they come off and there's two red plastic pieces and two blue plastic pieces. So you can mix and match and do all kinds of neat things to try to designate controllers. It is USB wired and it goes to the PC and to the Switch. But you know, the price is right. It's, it's free, right? Um, I definitely love how the Siege bag looks. Let me get to something else. A little bit of advertisement for the uh, video game cavern came with it. And I have like all of my paper stuff in here. So I'll slide that down there. And of course I got the 2023 event guide. That was on the table, not in the bag. I got a the video game cavern wrist band. Then I ran to a couple of stores, uh, Retro Raven. I think I bought something from them, which I will show you later. Um, I, I did not keep track of who all I bought stuff from and what I bought from them specifically. Uh, here is Upstate Games. Uh, they had a wonderful store as well, or a representation. And get a few things out of this bag so that I don't miss anything. Here is my Friday band from Pinky's Arcade. Okay, bag is empty. So I can start putting a few things back into it, at least for this video. Now, I met Scott and Jen, and we both used Sticker Mule to make all kinds of buttons and stuff. And I've got a Retro Rivals coaster and a Retro Rivals pen. Now, I've taken the pen back off of my convention backpack, but it's definitely going back on and never coming off, unless I need to use it in another video. I uh, got to run into Two Dudes Gaming again. I uh, met them at uh, Game Jam South in Huntsville, Alabama in 2022. They were really cool. And again, they were really cool this year. Got to run into Retrobeard again. And we talked about CNC machines and inventory and how he's been doing and stuff and like what new machines he's got. Um, for those of you who don't know, I used to be an engraver a long time ago for a company called Things Remembered. 
I, I was uh, actually so good of an engraver that I was running around training other people how to do it. Let's see, oh yeah, I got a Southeast Game Exchange sticker. And oh, by the way, I am going to be doing the exact same thing that Tom and Lacey does with their stickers. I'm gonna be converting every one of these to magnets. Also, I got a game. This, what game is this? Rusty Spout Rescue Adventure from Seven Raven Studios. It is an Xbox game. I'm not gonna reveal the, the uh, claiming code yet because I haven't claimed mine yet. Definitely need to do that. That was part of the swag bag. Uh, there was another game, car, there was a card game there called Other Worlds Trading Card Game. Uh, I never, I didn't get into this one, but uh, it's uh, Selfia the Platinum Swordstress. Wonderful art has the, the Southeast Game Exchange logo on it. Um, but it's it's definitely uh, a quality card. The card stock is good. Wow, the card stock is very thick. Um, almost thick enough to not really shuffle that well. And here is another card game. And I got into this card game. This is Super Show by SRG Games. Uh, this is a wrestling card game. This character is, get it up there, 8-Bit uh, Eric. And if you see that right, right there, I got him to sign my copy. Apparently, this card is was not very well distributed. It was only for Southeast Game Exchange. And unfortunately, I believe a lot of people got rid of this and just threw it in the trash. He's actually a decent character from what I've played in the game so far. I'm still kind of a novice, but it's a really fun game and a really great community. Uh, another person I met was Drinking Games with Josh, and he gave me one of his dust sleeves. And unfortunately, because of all of the heat and everything, it has separated a little bit, but I have secured it back down. Now, it wasn't empty either. So I got a pen from Video Game Dust Sleeves and that's gonna be going on the backpack as well, the convention backpack. Another sticker that I'm going to convert to a, uh, to a magnet for the fridge. And then a card from Video Game Dust Sleeves. And I'm gonna go ahead and let him let this card plug him. He does really good work. I've seen all kinds of, of things like that, of, of his work, and it's just great. And I also got a sticker from, from Josh as well. And it's a really good high quality sticker. I don't know if this is Sticker Mule or not, but that's the ones that I used. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is all the giveaway stuff or stuff that was given to me. This is not the stuff that I spent money on. I spent money on other things. But one of the things I bought was from 8-Bit Eric. And uh, it's this really, really nice 8-Bit Eric shirt. Um, I'm very happy with it. It's, it is a good, good size for me. Yes, uh, it is a 2X. I am not a small person, but I got to meet him. I got to talk with him and he is a really, really, really nice human being. Now, again, talking about nice people, I got to meet Gary from Rock Solid Productions, and he didn't recognize my face. But as soon as he saw my business card that had my logo on it for my channel, he lit up like a Christmas tree. His expression went from confusion to absolute joy that, that he finally got to meet me. And I didn't think that, that he would be that excited to meet me. Uh, 
because I was more excited. I thought I would be more excited to meet him. And, and he, he met me at the same energy level. And I don't know why it might be just because of like the types of comments that I leave behind. It's, I usually try to put a lot of thought into it and stuff, but I'm, I'm not here to toot my own horn on that. One of the things I did bring with me was my 3DS. And I brought it to do the street pass thing because that's just kind of a neat thing to do at conventions. What I forgot was I had been playing a game and I'd completely forgotten that I had paused that game during the entire convention. And so I didn't collect a single street pass. And you know what? That's okay. The game that I was playing was a whole lot of fun. And I'll show you that next. I did not pick this up at Siege. I picked it up before Siege specifically to bring it and get it signed. I got to meet Jay Square Pegs, the little hobbit, and he was, man, he's so down to earth. He was so good and, and so kind and so very happy to sign this game. And to have someone who's worked on this game, and this game, this game is fun. I ignore that part, the EA part, just ignore it. This game is actually fun. It's definitely left brain, left, right brain, swapping back and forth. Uh, each, any of, either of these games standalone could have gotten stale pretty quickly, but the combination of the two and how you have to swap back and forth is really good. But this game is great. And Jay, I got Jay to sign it for me. And eventually I found out that Jay didn't have a Sharpie. So uh, like I said in my prep video for conventions, I brought an extra Sharpie. I gave it to him because I didn't want anyone else to be denied the joy of having Jay sign this. And I didn't want Jay to be denied the joy of being able to sign the game either. Um, so I did speak about a card game. I got a couple of the cards. These are just some of the packs that I got. There are some packs that just don't have boxes that I picked up as well. I got this card game and I got to spend a little bit of money on it, but the community is great. The game is balanced. I've played multiple collectible card games. I've started off in Magic. I played Nutrunner. I played Shadow Fist. I've played uh, Dot Hack Enemy. Um, I've played 7th C. I've played uh, Overpower. I I've played all kinds of collectible card games. And this card game's been out for like 10 years. Now it's very underground. It's, it's wrestlers or superheroes if you want to go that route. And that's what the 8-bit Eric card is part of. Um, they don't currently don't have any power creep. And for a game that's 10 years old, that's a pretty big accomplishment. Um, the community is great. They're very friendly. They are very welcoming to new players. Uh, I've only played this game like six times now, and I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, another thing that I nearly forgot, I nearly skipped it, drinking in games with Josh, or drinking games with Josh, uh, got me Kegaman. This is a flask in the shape of an NES cart. And it's hilarious. It definitely fits the theme of everything that Josh is and how fun loving he is and how much he loves video games as well. Well, it looks like I've got a full table, so I need to fix that. The 
wonder of magic of video editing. So, some of the things that I purchased. First up, I got this guy. And it is a very weird Rubik's Cube. And I like my Rubik's Cube and stuff, but this is something I've never seen before. And it is the Alexander's Star Puzzle. Um, each star rotates. Now, this thing was a little beat up. Um, it had some dirt on it, and I guess that's the nicest way I can put it. Dirt from people handling this thing for a really long time. And it didn't turn at all when I first got it. I don't remember what I paid for almost anything, but I grabbed some, some oil and oiled things up and smoothed things off and cleaned and cleaned and cleaned this thing for a while and even got some oil down in between the parts so that things can glide a little bit better. I'm um, thinking I might have to do some uh, lithium grease or something like that to get them to move a little bit smoother than this. But this is the first thing I got, one of the first things that I got, and I absolutely love it. And I know, I haven't even gotten to video games yet. But we'll leave the best for last, right? The next thing I got was this. This is Star Wars on Laserdisc. And I didn't know that this movie was so long on Laserdisc that it would require not one, not two, but three double-sided laser discs. Now I'm sure there's like special commentary and stuff, but yes, I do have a laser disc player. Yes, it does work. No, it is not the one, it is not the pioneer one that has the TurboGrafx-16 and the Sega Genesis built into it. That thing is crazy expensive. My Laserdisc player cost me 20 bucks. But I like Laserdisc. I like the idea of being able to have a unaltered version of Star Wars. So that's, that is that. Also, the fun thing, the guy that sold it <clears throat> had these bags, the Toys R Us bags. Unfortunately, when carrying a laser disc in a, in a bag, it usually, a corner will poke through the hole or will poke a hole through it. I got a Toys R Us bag and I love my Toys R Us. I miss Toys R Us. I wish they would come back. One of the big things that I purchased, it came with a game. And yes, I've already printed a cover for it from the cover project and used a DS case that has the Game Boy Advance up there. So yes, I got Disney cars, but that gives you a hint of what's in this bubble wrap. Yep, that's right. I splurged and got a modified Retro 6 Game Boy Advance. This thing is completely murdered out an adjustable backlight. I mean, just, just look at it, just look at it. And it is, it is beautiful. I cannot get over how pretty this is. It has got the screen. It's got a glass lens. Uh, it's got the adjustable brightness. So I'm going to hold down and just so that we can adjust the brightness up and down. It is wonderful. I am so happy with it. Now, this set me back a little bit of money um, because it is a complete custom job. It is missing the amplifier, but honestly, most of the time I'm just gonna be playing with headphones anyways, but I wanted a backlit Game Boy Advance. And so 
I got one. And I'm, I could not be happier. Now, the game that was demoed with it was the Cars game, and the guy intended, I, I thought I'd stolen the game when he when I bought it and stuff, and he was like, no. I went back to him the next day on Sunday and said, I think I stole one of your games. He, he kind of laughed at me and says, no, that actually, that game is worthless and, or well, <clears throat> not very expensive. He didn't say worthless, but um, he said that game's not very expensive and it was intended to go with the console. Now, I don't have any other weird little things anymore. It is really just down to video games now. So, being a TurboGrafx-16 fan, I picked up Bonk's Adventure. What I forgot was that I have the 4-in-1 disc for the Turbo Duo that already has Bonk's Adventure on it. So, I now have to find a good home for this TurboGrafx-16 game. And I think I'll be able to find it a good home. I don't think that's going to be too difficult for me to do. One of the other games I got was The Last Story for the Wii. Uh, this is an XSeed RPG game for the Wii, and this is not like, you know, oh, this is a cutesy little RPG. This is a full on, very serious RPG with um, just, I mean, it's T for teen, so it's definitely got its themes and stuff. Then I picked up a game on the Switch, Trials of Mana. Uh, it's, it's basically complete. Um, obviously the TurboGrafx-16 game is complete. And the last story is also complete. Uh, Cars was just loose card only, and the case is mine, and the artwork is obviously fake. Game Boy Advance cases, games do not come in those kinds of cases. Then I started collecting again for a system that I thought I was done collecting for. And the first one is Arcana Heart 3 Love Max. Um, I thought I was done with the Vita. I really did. And this one's complete. It comes with the game. Uh, you don't see any stress marks on the inside of the case or anything like that. It has a little, you know, tiny instruction booklet kind of thing. Then I decided that I wanted another Vita game. This was Sly Cooper. It's the complete collection. And I get to play all of the Sly Cooper games now and earn trophies because I am a little bit of a trophy hunter, but not so much like that it rules my life. You know, if I can, if I can earn a trophy while playing a game, I will preferably play it that way. And then I got Child of Light. This is another wonderful RPG for the Vita. And I know, I know, I thought I was done collecting for the Vita, but apparently not. Then, I'm a big Transformers fan. So once I saw this for a decent price, uh, I had to pick it up. It is in really good shape. It is a very fun beat em up game with cell shaded graphics. And this thing, this thing is a blast to play. I, I, I cannot get over how much fun it is to play this game. And the last PlayStation 4 game that I got was Uncharted Lost Legacy. I had this game already, but it was the greatest hits version. And um, it's Sony, if you're listening, I hate the red cases. Stop it. Don't do it anymore. Ah, stop it. Don't do red cases anymore. I don't want to see him for the PlayStation 4. I don't want to see him for the PlayStation 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. No more red cases. They stick out like a sore thumb and they make the, the games on the bookshelf look awful. Stop it. So yes, 
I got this game specifically because I wanted the blue case version and not the red case version. I know, I'm weird. I don't care. And the very last thing was this beauty here. And when I say this beauty here, we're going to have to do a little bit more of editing magic. What do you know? It worked. So this is Grow Lancer Heritage of War. This is the second Grow Lancer game or package of game. Um, the first one was Working Designs. It's actually two games. Um, this one is the second release of a Grow Lancer title in the United States. And you can kind of tell that Atlas decided to follow in someone's footsteps, right? I mean, we've got lenticular cards, we've got buttons, we've got a keychain, we've got a soundtrack, we've got an illustration archive that is just absolutely beautiful, has some wonderful art in here. You know, I mean, it's got the huge box, it's got the game, it's got it all. Uh, this thing is a stunning package of like everything. And I just cannot get over how well this was all put together. And while the Game Boy Advance with the back screen was probably my highest dollar purchase, this was my most expensive game. Uh, mainly, I wanted it so much because I already have the other Grow Lancer, and, and once I saw how much of an homage to Working Designs this was, and it doesn't come in these sleeve, these cards don't come in these sleeves, but I perfect fit them into these sleeves because I really have a lot of respect for this level of craftsmanship. Now, yes, my box is a little beat up and stuff, and I'll have to get to retro protection to try to come up with some sort of box for this. But other than that, this is great. I am very happy with it, and I am very much looking forward to playing this game. But that is all of my pickups at Siege, and I'm going to do a little bit more camera magic and clean all of this up. So give me just a second. Hey, so a little bit of an interruption here. I've got, uh, got some more things to talk about because I picked up so much stuff. I forgot about some of it. So with the magic of editing, uh, I am a big toys to life fan. And um, yeah, I like Disney Infinity, I like Marvel, so I picked up Hulkbuster Iron Man. And you can't have Hulkbuster Iron Man without normal Iron Man. And you can't have one Marvel character or two Marvel characters without another. And Spider-Man, this is a really good pose. Like I was very impressed with how this pose is. And you know, with Spider-Man, you, you can't have Spider-Man without Venom. And this is another like really good sculpt, a really good pose. Um, and it just, it just works. And then I had to pick up my granddaughter's very first favorite movie. You know, I have to pick up Jack from Nightmare Before Christmas. Then I had to be super nerdy. So I'll move these guys back here because you know, this wasn't nerdy enough, right? So, start with some duplicates. I accidentally picked up a duplicate of Kylo Ren, a duplicate of Anakin Skywalker. So those guys are up for trade or whatever. Um, just reach out to me. We'll figure something out. And then <clears throat> picked up a Vader. He is not for trade. He is my only Vader. I picked up a Yoda. I picked up uh, oh goodness, I've forgotten this guy's name. 
in the comments. Just go ahead and correct me. And I picked up a Leia and I picked up a Han. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I'm going to have to uh, do some more magic. All right. So, yeah, I picked up Luke as well. And yeah, I, uh, I love Toys to Life, uh, Disney Infinity. I love Star Wars. And this guy was like selling them for 25 cents a piece. And I just, I couldn't say no. Um, he made me a great deal because I was buying so many of them and uh, none of them had their lightsabers broken except after I owned Darth Vader, I managed to break his lightsaber off. But thankfully I saved it and through the magic of super glue, I have fixed it. Now, these are all of the Toys to Life things I found. I did not find any anything like my Dreamcast Issue Zero magazine that I needed and all this other stuff. There's a lot of things that were like way off the beaten path that a lot of stores just didn't think to bring because honestly, probably not that profitable. And I'm one of like maybe two people looking for it. The other thing I found was this. Now, I know it just looks like a business card, but secretly, this is a pre-order for a TurboGrafx-16 game. And this game looks like a beautiful Final Fantasy Tactics Fire Emblem style game. It is Strife Sisters, and it is by Matthew Kersey. Um, he's, he's doing this in assembly, and uh, it is a beautiful game. Now, I, get, I did get to play the demo, and I am actually signed up to be uh, a tester for him. Uh, I do have the ability to load ROMs onto an EverDrive and put them into a TurboGrafx-16 because this is going coming up on coming out on Hue Card. It is not coming out on the Turbo CD. There's going to be a physical Hue Card released. I got lucky and I got in when the pre-orders are sixty dollars. There is a uh, a more premium edition that's like a hundred dollars and stuff but um he told me all the extra stuff that came with it and i was not really interested in that i just wanted to be be able to get the game and play the game uh yeah this this is really exciting a brand new and i mean brand new turbo graphics 16 strategy rpg game and uh this was actually so exciting that John Hancock himself ran over to the guy and bought one of his reprogrammable prototype cards or Hue cards. And uh, yeah, that's that's awesome. And I'm really excited to be able to to like help him and maybe uh, prototype or well uh, play test some of this stuff in the future. Maybe I'll be able to release some of that information and how things are going. I'll have to work out that out with him uh, under the NDA, but the game's coming. It is, it is Strife Sisters. It is absolutely beautiful. I love how everything is going. The aesthetic is actually still classic TurboGrafx-16 and you guys gotta catch, check this out. If you're a TG16 fan, here it is. This is this is what you gotta look for. All right then. Now back to our regularly scheduled program. Man, I gotta learn that trick for cleaning up the rest of the game room. So, not to be outdone by herself, which is weird. My, uh, my, my wife decided a week after Siege to get me some more gifts, which was weird. So I got Lego 2K Drive, and it's the special edition with the Lego car. And yes, I've already assembled it because uh, 
for me, Legos are very cathartic and this thing looks really cool as, you know, just a Lego car. And I cannot wait to start playing this. It's, it's just going to be awesome for me. And she got me something else. Marvel Midnight Suns. She, <laughs> so like even after all of Siege and stuff and, and like making shirts for people that I met, um, that, that I, I knew I was going to meet and stuff. Uh, you'll have to watch their videos to see and spot some of the shirts. I'm not going to spoil it. But yeah, like she turns around and does this. So let's go over the timeline again on what happened. So Friday, get picked up by Brandon, have a wonderful conversation, go to Pinky's, wake up Saturday, get a, all of this swag and run around like crazy like a kid in a candy store and have fun, discover a new card game that I'm playing, and then uh, hang out with everyone at dinner and even later at a bar. Um, Sunday, get up, do go back out and just have fun again at the convention. Austin, you run a wonderful convention. I cannot, I, 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 just, I can't be thankful enough and then Sunday was the goodbye dinner. Now, the people that I've met that were very, very cool was like Gary at Rock Solid Productions. He was really excited once he realized who I was. Uh, got G, um, or no, sorry, uh, G to the next level. He, um, he was really, really fun and excited to, to meet me as well. Uh, Jay from Square Pegs, uh, Fresh and Mary from Coapal of Nerds, Drinking Games with Josh, Samantha Azaria. I, uh, I got to meet Dennis from, from Retro Rivals. I got to meet Retro Rivals. I got to meet Brandon from Unnecessary Rambling. Uh, I mean, just I was so happy to meet absolutely everyone. I got to meet Gabo, um, who is probably the most generous and kind person on YouTube, even though I know that that people try to contest that that's me. Um, you know, it's kindness is is something that you just keep giving and you can have more of it. Uh, but, you know, I got to meet Mort. I got to meet uh, Retro Ricky. I got to meet all of NES Pursuit. Uh, you know, I, uh, I got to meet all kinds of people. I mean, just from all corners of the globe, there were people from Texas. I got to meet a, a bit Eric. I got to meet all kinds of people. And I, as much fun as I had looking for games and hunting and stuff like that, it was so much more about the people and just the, the kindness and the excited like conversations about video games and stuff. And I love it. And if you love video games, I cannot suggest going to Siege enough. Go to Siege. It is going to be bigger and better next year. And I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to try my best to go to Siege. I'm hoping Retro Rivals will be there. I'm going to be, I'm definitely going to be coordinating with Scott and Jen and basically try to show up to every convention they show up to just because they are such good friends and I cannot imagine not having a great time when they're they when they are present. They, they are the people in the room having the most fun. And if you meet them and genuinely get along with them, you're going to have that kind of fun too. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month and look forward to sharing them. As always, please like, 
comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.